Hello everyone, this video was originally way longer than it's right now because, well, when I was uploading this video, Wildcard actually put out a patch that fixed a lot of the stuff that I was talking about in this video and as well as that, they uh, kind of did an update that wiped pretty much all of the bases on extinction so please maybe make a new wipe or do whatever, I don't know. I wanna thank you guys for actually showing us that you care about us, care about the game and you care about fixing it. Thank you guys, keep doing the same thing and we'll support you forever, I promise to you forever. Hello everyone, it's Xfibu here and just before the video starts I want to tell you guys to subscribe if you like the video and as well as that leave a like, it helps me out a lot, it can get to the devs faster and yes, thank you. There is extinction content coming very soon and without further ado, let's get into the video. And I have a pretty serious video for today and it is about the ARC devs and the extinction DLC and the game as a whole. I'm not gonna bash or insult the developers in any way since I greatly respect what they're doing simply because I cannot do something that goes anywhere close to what they're doing in that scale and the amount of content they're, that they're putting out but the sole purpose of the video is to help them if that is possible uh, to make the game better because this is the game that we all love that we want to succeed and that has some problems that we can hopefully fix together uh, a few of the problems that I'm gonna be talking about today are undermeshing, some new dinos and yes that's pretty much it. First of all I think I'll be talking about the meshing because it's a pretty pretty big problem in the game as of right now and it's been like that for a long time and there are actually a few pretty simple fixes that actually will fix meshing or make it like not as powerful as it is right now and make it so it does less damage. One of the fixes is actually disabling the damage damage on the bottom of foundations, like the bottom part of foundations, which would greatly um, improve the fixing of the problem, which is very good, very good, yes. And there is also another like decision that my friend Compact that I'm playing with right now on Extinction came up and it includes parasaurs. And let's say you have your parasaur in your base and it only detects enemies that are on the ground. Compact actually made a mod that detects players under the ground as well and if the parasaur detects a player under the ground it puts them in this coma like state they are full torpor full food like and water but their food and water consumption is increased and they eventually die which is pretty much one of the best solutions that i've seen so far for this particular problem and I think it could be implemented very easily this is like maybe a temporary fix that wildcard can do and then actually work on the maps themselves so you don't have any mesh spots or spots that you can go under the map and yes i think that is a pretty easy way of fixing it like implementing compact mode or just just in disabling the damage on the bottom part of the foundations this would actually greatly do a favor of meshing and it will prevent a lot of people from actually doing it and because there is just no point of doing it since you cannot damage the foundations from below the only thing that it might be used for is for like scouting a base and planning your raid but then again the raid has to be uh on the ground so i think this is pretty easy to do like i think compact did it in like five minutes and it's a uh, four row code like it's just four rows of code and it's like very short code that actually fixes it and yes i think uh, if wildcard puts like i don't know a day or two into like fixing matching it it will be fixed for a temporary period of time until they actually work on the maps themselves and make it so you cannot go under the mesh in any way. Uh, I don't think that uh, ice picks should be removed because yes they are OP you can under mesh with them but it is a mechanic of the game which is pretty pretty good and I think it is uh, easily fixable. I am pretty sure that this is easily fixable and yes. Okay so that is for the under meshing part of the video. Uh, let's get into the other topic. 
Okay, the second topic is about corrupted dinos and leading them to someone's base so you can raid it easily. Okay, so let's say I am out in the desert or wastelands or whatever you wanna call them. I see a corrupted dino, for example a wyvern, and I see Kishku's base like 5 minutes away from this corrupted dino. I aggro the corrupted wyvern and then I go to Kishku's base and Kishku's base is gone. Yes, this is pretty bad and I think corrupted dinos should be made to attack a tribe's base only if the tribe actually attacked the corrupted dino. Uh, this leads to a few problems like for example putting some of your turrets on all targets this would make like the base pretty expensive and the bullets for the base pretty expensive since your turrets are going to shoot the corrupted dino and not only the corrupted di dino but the dinos that come to your base as well. Okay so there is a solution that I came up with just right now and it is putting an option to turrets to shoot corrupted dinos. Just simply corrupted dinos and that's pretty much super easy to do super quick and it fixes the problem okay this is actually probably one of the best fixes that you can do or make corrupted dinos not attack bases unless they are hit by the tribe that the base is from whatever uh, nice English exhibit. Okay, you guys should definitely decrease the damage of the Velanosaur since that is the only problem that I have with it. This is a pretty short segment about it, but please reduce the damage of the Velanosaur. Okay, so Snow Owls is the last topic that I'm gonna talk about and it is a pretty important one since it's kind of broken. Uh, they should not freeze you for as long as they like when, I mean, for as long as they're holding the uh, right mouse button, which is a very, very high IQ you uh, are requiring a uh, tactic yes okay so um you shouldn't be able to freeze someone for as long as you like and it should be for about like five seconds or something so you can get off your bird and maybe bother them do whatever you want to do with them just don't make it like for as long as you like as well as that i just found out that owls can actually freeze turrets like actual turrets out turrets tech turrets whatever turrets and i cannot come up with a solution for that so i guess you guys will have to come up with that but it has to be pretty fast because a lot of bases will be lost. Oh wait, they already got lost because um, your update.